Hello, everyone. Welcome to the world today. I'm Joke Rogers here in Lagos. We begin the program today from here in Nigeria. It's a historic day in the country as a new dispensation begins with the swearing in of Bola Tinubu as Nigeria's president for the next four years. He took the oath of office in an elaborate ceremony at the Eagle Square in Abuja shortly before 11 a.m. He succeeds President Muhammad Buhari and Vice President Yemi Oshibajo, whose second four-year term elapsed today. Today's ceremony was witnessed by President Tinumbu's predecessors, including immediate past President Muhammad Buhari and former President Goodluck Jonathan. It was also attended by dignitaries from within and outside Nigeria, including foreign heads of state and governments from Africa, such as the new Prime Minister of Gabon, Billy Bainze, uh, President of the Republic of Cote d'Ivoire, Alassane Ouattara, Ghanaian President Nana Akufado, and Rwanda President Paul Kagame, as well as the President of South Africa, Cyril Ramaphosa. Well, fuel subsidy is gone, according to the President, uh, and for anyone uh, doubting any such moves from his administration, those were his words for them. In his inaugural speech, after taking his oath, President Bola Tinubu reiterated that there's no provision for subsidy in the 2023 budget, so it cannot stay. He was also full of promises to Nigerians to tackle various challenges in the country, top of which is security. He promised to reform the country's security doctrine and its architecture, invest more in security personnel and provide better training and equipment, as well as pay and firepower. He also spoke about electricity infrastructure, job creation, inclusion of women and youths, and foreign policy. Usha. Remodel our economy to bring our growth and develop the GDP much better, achieve the GDP much better than we have today. I assure you, of first subsidy. Unfortunate, the budget that I've glimpsed before I assume of him and what I've heard is that no provision is there for fair subsidy. So fair subsidy is gone. <laughs> Subsidy can no longer justify an ever increasing cost in the wake of dry resources. And there's more as Nigeria's new president also made a few comments regarding foreign policy. He says a crisis in Sudan and the turn from Democracy by several nations in our immediate neighborhood are of pressing concern. As such, he says his primary foreign policy objective must be the peace and stability of the West African subregion and the African continent on a whole. He said he will work with ECOWAS, the AU, and willing partners in the international community to end extant conflicts and to resolve new ones. He says uh, he he, his plan is to contain threats to peace uh, and also retool foreign policy of Nigeria to be more actively uh, a leader in the region and a continental quest for collective prosperity. Well, South Africa's President Cyril Ramaphosa is among the, or was among the heads of states who attended the inauguration and Nigerians in his country are among those keenly uh, watching the process from now on. Of course, they watch the inauguration and then the expectations of the new president. Many say they are just hopeful uh, that the new administration of President Bola Tinubu will make Nigeria a greater country for the people. We spoke to some Nigerians in Pretoria, South Africa, on their expectations. Nigerians living in South Africa are also keenly watching as the new government of President Bola Ahmed Tinubu takes the reins to steer the nation through the next four years of nationhood. Ah, I've got mixed feelings. 
Despite the mixed feelings, there's also hope that the many expectations will be met. My expectation is for the incoming president uh, to do what is needful for Nigeria. We cannot afford to also go through the same eight years of past regime to continue as a new uh, regime. So we want things changed. We want that country back. We want Nigeria back to its track. We want unemployment scrapped off. We want better life for our people back home in Nigeria. I expect them to come in and do something about economy as soon as possible. It's not going to be easy. There are no easy way out. Things are so bad right now. And I honestly think people should give them like two years to let their policies and everything to be in place and let's see the result. Otherwise, uh, more people will go into poverty. The election has been conducted, even though there are so many issues surrounding the election. But that nonetheless, we hope and believe that the new administration would would bring peace in Nigeria and will bring development, development to, to, to the country, Nigeria. In almost every field of endeavor in South Africa and indeed the world over, Nigerians can be found doing greatly. Most say it's about enabling environments, a factor for excelling they hope will be replicated back home. I'm looking forward to um, an overhaul of our educational system. I'm looking forward to no more strikes of the lecturers, of the um, academic staff in Nigeria. I'm looking forward to better and quality education in Nigeria. I'm looking forward to the government funding more research because trust me Nigerians we have the brains everywhere we go we are doing well except at home we are hopeful that definitely it's going to be a good time for Nigeria and Nigeria large. I'm hoping that um, true democracy will be given a chance to play and it's just that hope everyone is holding on to for greater Nigeria beyond the ceremonies and fanfare Hope the new government will hopefully not dash. From Johannesburg, South Africa, Betty Dibia, Channels Television News. And for some Nigerians in the United Kingdom who spoke to our correspondent, Tenyolai Oyetayo, they urged the new president to tackle the issue of insecurity, ensure the welfare of Nigerians are kept, and also the economic growth and development in the, in the country. <laughs> Popularly tagged as Little Lagos because of its vibrant Nigerian community, this is Peckham in southeast London. Most Nigerians here are optimistic about the new administration of Bola Ahmed Tunumbu, with many citing his achievements while he was governor of Lagos State. I know that um, um, what is done in Lagos is ready to do it all over the state with the cooperation of all the Governor's Forum and uh, every every Nigerian should join hands. And uh, in the next four years, I'm sure Nigeria will not be where it is today. There's going to be a tremendous economic recovery. And um, I'm absolutely confident that there's going to be changes. And uh, lots of uh, Nigerians in the diaspora uh, will be able to come back home. <laughs> I so much believe in him because he's a man of dignity and I welcome him on board. Because, in fact, I'm one of the most happiest person on earth when he won the election. Because I will, a lot of change is going to take place at the moment. I know how what Jagaban did in Lagos and if he can continue. And now that he's coming to be a president, I believe he has a lot of vision how to make Nigerian proud. And I believe in him. But many also hope for rapid changes, especially in the area of security and the economy. Security is the number one. Because we, that's why we want to come back home and do a lot of things. But when you are thinking about what is going on in Nigeria, it is not safe at all. I personally, I won't bring, I won't bring my daughter at this point. As much as I love Nigeria, I like to come over there. But thinking of the security alone, just like, you know what, do you really want to do it? And if this new administration can do that, that will be a plus. And I'm very sure that all the Nigerians back home and here in diaspora will be so happy. 
I think he has seen the problem that Nigeria is facing at the moment about security and uh, about how everything is so expensive and uh, how you can see that majority of our people, young ones, they are not leaving the country and we are so blessed with so potential people that academically vibrant and uh, they are leaving the country. So this is not a good thing for a, any nation. So we are praying that this new administration, they are going to look into that that you know that all these problems, especially the security, because that's the major thing that is causing the country to decline economically. With no diaspora voting, several Nigerians traveled back home from the UK to vote. Dr. Simisola Alabi is one of them. She hopes promises made regarding healthcare will start to take shape in the new administration's first 100 days in office. We know that healthcare is one of our major, major challenges. That also, we also have security, obviously, finance and the rest of it. But healthcare for me is number one, because if we don't have a healthy people, then our GDP is going to continue to drop because evidence has shown that for every year you increase life expectancy, you also increase GDP. So there's a very, very strong link between money and also health. So I'm looking at that. So in, in summary, for me, I'm looking at in three months' time, 100 days in office, what are the signs of accountability for every area you've said you're going to deliver on? She also encourages the new president to engage with the diaspora more. The message to the president really is to remember those abroad. Most people who are abroad are out, out here or you know abroad because of the economy. They're economic migrants. They just didn't go out. They've left because Nigeria was not serving them. So we want to see more of our people come back, those who want to come back home, to be able to have those pathways to come back home. For me, Nigeria can never leave me and I'll always be part of the system. But I want to see my colleagues and other people, particularly in my sector, find easier ways of working in Nigeria. But also, we also have to put ourselves out there as well and say we're available to serve, we're available to work and obviously be fairly remunerated for what we do. So I would say to, to, pres to the president, I was a very young girl when he was, Lagos State uh, government, Governor, and I'll say that it should bring back those that same energy, you know, have people who are able to liaise with those in and outside the country, you know, bring things like electronic voting for people in diaspora quickly, you know, and start to work towards that so that by the next, the next four years we can do that as well. According to the World Bank, Nigeria is the largest recipient of diaspora remittances in sub-Saharan Africa. For Nigerians in the United Kingdom, all eyes are now on the new president to see how he fulfills his manifesto and makes way for more investment. From London, Teniola Umitayo for Channel Television News. And there's more from Nigerians in diaspora. With a new president comes renewed hopes that the many problems Nigerians in the UAE have been bearing for nearly three years will soon find a resolution. Our correspondent, Mayo Adegoke, captures the high expectations from the new government in this next report. Work permit restriction for nearly two years a visa ban for most Nigerian passport holders, a total stop to direct flights between Nigeria and the UAE as a result of the money owed Emirates Airlines, increased security risk linked to Nigerians, sex trafficking, cybercrime. These are among the issues associated with Nigeria and her citizens in the UAE. As far as Nigerians are concerned, new president Bola Ahmed Tinubu has his work cut out for him. Over the last three years, diplomatic relations between both countries has gone from bad to worse and now nearly non-existent, a reality the outgone president, Muhammad Dubuari, and his team failed to resolve before passing the baton. Battered, bruised, but not broken, Nigerians in the UAE now look to their new leader to save the situation. If I was the president, pertaining to this issue on ground, first of I want to see the aviation minister and the government of UAE sit together. They settle things. 
they, they just settle it. There is something wrong somewhere. Maybe it's a miscommunication, misinformation, misinterpretation. There is something somewhere that is going on. So should, we would first of all settle that clash. There has been rumors saying that um, it's the airline issue, the deaths on ground and blah, blah, blah. If that can be cleared, if, it's, if that's going to stop this whole thing, they should clear it. Eight years is eight years. He has to, the old man has to go. So the, for Ashiwa Jubala to become in our father, what we really expect from him is much more like what we expect from Buari. Because I don't like to you, the, 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 the road is not building the day. But we, we expect much as a citizen of Nigerian here in Dubai. This is where we walk, this is where we hand our who catch money to send to our parents, our cousins, our wife back home. So a lot of things we expect from the president is like maybe you come down to UAE and be able to like sort out the issue. The Dubai of 10 years is not the of today. I can tell people about Dubai 10 years ago, what we are passing through. Basically, when our people went to work, they will tell you, go and bring your brothers. We wanted to give them job. But all of a sudden, something just went wrong. What's really happening? So I would like them to come in to work on our work, work permit, carry visa, business visa. And if, if it's possible, there should be a guideline for everybody so to protect Nigeria name as well. Because you can't say that uh, Nigeria is not good. Also, you cannot blame the government that they are not good. They have to protect what they have. While many of them would not mind returning to a better homeland, they appreciate the opportunity to live here and earn their keep. They are also hoping for a better government back home. I got a job in another company due to the visa status. I cannot go there, other company. So that is the area is affecting me. Not only me, it's affecting most of my colleagues. So that is... And how are you surviving? Yeah, we are surviving through all of our family at home. All the money that we already saved, we need to call home. So they are sending money for us for eating here. Uh, we are expecting a good government from that new president because the previous government is... Uh, all the Nigerians who are living here, they are very difficult about that previous government because they didn't do anything to us. Most of our business is collapses because of this government all over the world, they are complaining about what the government is doing at that tenure. But we are expecting good uh, leadership from that new government, inshallah. The Nigerian community is recommending that the new government prioritize the payment of monies owed Emirates Airline, a joint government effort to tackle security concerns, and the support to establish strong business structure for Nigerians in the UAE. There was a time the embassy uh, got uh, us getting to know ourselves by way of uh, forming the Nigerian Union members here, comprising of all the states of Nigeria. We had it then, and I don't know when uh, the ambassador then left. I think uh, the, 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 the system or the, the plan died off. So um, in, in light of that, uh, it would be good, like I said before, for us to really get ourselves using the business council or whatever method we think we can use. For these Nigerians who are desperate to have normalcy restored, May 29th would not be soon enough for the new president to take action. From Dubai in the United Arab Emirates, Maya Wadigoke, Channels Television. Welcome back. Nigerians living abroad believe that these are pivotal times for the country's democracy. Well, our Washington correspondent, Maria Bird, spoke with former Nigerians in diaspora chairman, Patience Key, about the hopes for the incoming government. Uh, we know that Inauguration Day is right here upon us. Tell us what the diaspora is hoping for in this new administration and the expectations of Inauguration Day. Our hopes are you know, for a good govern for good governance. There have been so many antecedents. A lot of things happened during the elections, and uh, it's not something they can just wipe away from the hearts of people. So there's a lot of fear. Uh, some hopeful. So it's a mixture of fear and hope. You know. So we don't know what's going to happen. Um, the previous administration, people had a lot of hopes. 
more people thought, you know, it was really going to be good. Nigeria was going to be transformed positively. But, you know, after eight years, we went during the period we went from one recession to recession. Nigeria became the poverty capital of the world. Uh, 133 uh, people are known to be poor and a lot of things. So we in the diaspora, you know, working with those back home, there's a lot of fear. There's a lot of hopelessness. Uh, there is a lot of, you know, democracy hinges on the tenets of good governance. An election that is peaceful, an election that, that is that, that, that is not flawed, an election that's not accounted to be of that of, of malpractice, you know. So uh, we, we, everybody's wishing them well. I wish that because it's not about them. That's one thing people should understand. Being a president or being in the place of position is not about one man. It's not about a personal interest. It's about the economy. It's about the people. It's about the human capital that God has embedded in that country. It's about us, you know. So the Nigerians in diaspora, we, we want the best for Nigeria. You know, we want to see the best for that country because it's a country full of talent. A country that is not only knowledge-based, but human resources. A lot of resources. So Nigeria has no business being called poor. So there's a lot of fear mixed with hope. Patience, you mentioned uh, the economic struggles of Nigeria uh, that you've seen over the past few years. What do you foresee or hope the new administration realizes? Because as you said, Nigeria is resource rich. Uh, we know that some of the wealthiest um, Africans live in Nigeria. And so tell us what the hopes are for how uh, the new administration can use those resources and that wealth to be able to uh, take Nigeria economically to the next level. You see, Maria, when people are campaigning during primaries, you know, during uh, the campaign and all that, what you tell us is what we we'll believe that you're going to do. We hope that everything works well. They know what to do. But unfortunately, the people that have been in government over the years have been selfish. It's been about self-interest. So you, you mentioned kind of the need for selflessness, um, and we know many Nigerians in the diaspora even went back home uh, to help out with the election period. What are Nigerians in the diaspora expecting from uh, this president? Uh, what do they hope the relationship is between Nigerians in the diaspora and Nigeria? Um, and what is something that the Nigerians in the diaspora can do to give back um, to this administration? Nigerians in the diaspora, all we want for Nigeria is for the people to be to see transformation, true transformation, positive transformation in healthcare, in education, in the environment. Every nook and cranny of Nigeria needs help. Yeah. Every yeah. the economy is in shambles. So every nook and cranny, the road, infrastructures, human capital development, everything needs help in that country. So that's all we want to see. And these things are doable. Some people say when you come, just do one thing. Nigerians are full of talents. That's why no one man can lead that country, no matter, you know, being called the president. You bring people that know what to do. You, you mentioned know. Nigeria you being... Intent technocrats, people who are knowledgeable in different fields. This is not with the way Nigeria is right now. It's not for anyone to be looking for their brothers, their sisters, those who can help them to do whatever. But people that have the ideas that can help to fit in Nigeria where it needs to be. See, a lot of medical practitioners are living in Nigeria. Not only medical practitioners, people are running away, thinking that, you know, it's better elsewhere. Nigeria is about human beings, and they are there to give service to the people, create an enabling environment for lives and properties to thrive so that the nation can go forward. Those are some of the excerpts from uh, Nigerians in the diaspora from different parts of the world, given the expectations uh, for the incoming president in Nigeria, an inauguration that took place today 
in Abuja, the nation's capital. Let's move on to other stories, but still staying with politics. Uh, Chinese President Xi Jinping has sent a message of congratulations to Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan on his re-election. In his message, President Xi said that both China and Turkey are major developing countries and emerging market economies and share broad common interests. In recent years, China to key strategic cooperation relations and cooperative relations have maintained a momentum of growth and made positive progress in pragmatic cooperation in various fields. President Xi said that he attaches great importance to developing relations with Turkey and is willing to work with President Erdogan to strengthen mutual understanding and support each other on issues concerning each other's core interests and major concerns so as to promote the sustained, sound and steady growth of the strategic cooperative relations. Elsewhere now, U.S. President Joe Biden has urged lawmakers to pass the budget deal he struck with House Speaker Kevin McCarthy, saying that he did not make too many concessions to end a debt limit crisis. Mr. Biden told reporters at the White House that he believed Mr. McCarthy negotiated in good faith and had the votes to pass the agreement, which the president said protects his key policy priorities, and it's good news for the American people. We've got good news. We've got a, just spoke with Speaker McCarthy, and we've reached a bipartisan budget agreement that we're ready to move to the full Congress. And I think it's a really important step forward, excuse me. <clears throat> and it takes uh, the threat of catastrophic default off the table, protects our hard-earned and historic economic recovery. And the agreement also represents a compromise, which means no one got everything they want. But that's the responsibility of governing. And the, this is a deal is good news, for, I believe, you'll see, for the American people. The agreement prevents the worst possible crisis, a default for the first time in our nation's history. An economic recession, retirement accounts devastated, millions of jobs lost. It also protects key priorities and accomplishments and values that congressional Democrats and I have fought long for, long and hard for. Do you believe Speaker McCarthy has the vote, and did he negotiate in good faith? I think he negotiated with me in good faith. He kept his word. He said what he would do. He did, did what he said he'd do. And I have no idea whether he had the votes. I expect he does. But I don't think he would have made the agreement. North Korea has notified Japan of its plans to launch an artificial satellite between May 31st and June the 11th. It said it has completed its first military spy satellite and its leader, Kim Jong-un, has approved final preparations for the launch. Analysts say the satellite is part of a surveillance technology program that includes drones aimed at improving nuclear armed North Korea's ability to strike targets in the event of a war. North Korea has tried several times to launch Earth observation satellites, of which two appear to have been successfully placed in orbit, the latest in 2016. And China's foreign ministry has called for dialogue amidst growing tensions over North Korea's planned satellite launch. When asked if China had received any notice from North Korea of the planned launch, Chinese foreign ministry spokesperson Mao Ning would not comment directly on the issue. She said China hopes that all parties concerned will stick to the direction of a political settlement and address their legitimate concerns in a balanced manner through meaningful dialogue. On the other hand, Japan said it was preparing to destroy any North Korean missiles that threatened its territory. Chief Cabinet Secretary Hirokazu Matsuno told a news conference, in his words, North Korea launching a ballistic missile purporting to be a satellite is a serious provocation to our country's security. He said the Defense Ministry had issued orders to prepare to destroy North Korean missiles and that preparations were underway to deploy Pac-3 missile units to Okinawa.
South Korea is racing to become a major player in the world's market for weapons, eager to tap into Europe's hunger for arms. At this factory on its southern coast, automated robots and workers are churning out artillery vehicles destined for Poland. It's all run by Hawa Aerospace, already the globe's top maker of howitzers. The company is a big part of the $14 billion arms deal with the South Korean government struck with Poland last year as Western countries scramble to arm Ukraine and tensions spike in areas from North Korea to the South China Sea. Executives and officials say the deal will pave the way for Seoul's ambitions to be a world-class weapons supplier. And at least one person has been killed and 50 others missing after a boat accident on Ghana's Black Volta River in the Savannah region. Authorities said the boat capsized while transporting passengers from Dako, China to Pandai in the Borno uh, East region. The Bol District Director of the National Disaster Management Organization, Kipo Suleimana, said that the boat, which was overloaded with passengers and goods, hit a tree stump in the river and capsized. He said the area of the incident was inaccessible, making the search and rescue efforts difficult. He said locals were helping to find missing people. Malawi authorities have ended a corruption trial against former President Bakili Muluzi. Mr. Muluzi served two five-year terms as president between 1994 and 2004, but he was charged five years after he left office. He and his former personnel secretary, Linus Whiskey, were charged with abuse of public funds amounting to 1.7 billion kwacha. The Malawi High Court said it had freed Mr. Muluzi from all charges following a decision by the country's head of public prosecutions to discontinue the case. Mr. Muluzi has always protested his innocence, saying that the case was political persecution by the government of his successor, Bingu Matarika, with whom they fell out. There had been no real progress on the case under the administrations of successive presidents who enjoyed a good relationship with Mr. Muluzi. Eritrean President Isaiah Afweki has criticized U.S. unilateral sanctions, including those imposed on Eritrea as well as on other countries, as having no moral foundation. At the invitation of President Xi Jinping of China, President Afweki arrived in China earlier for this, uh, this month for a state visit during which the two heads of state held talks at the Great Hall of People in Beijing. The visit came ahead of the anniversary of three decades of diplomatic relations between the two countries, which fell on May the 24th. During his visit, President Afweki stressed in an interview that imposing sanctions on any country is nothing more than a power play that has no grounding in actual morality. What is the legality of imposing any sanction? What is the morality of imposing any sanction on any nation? It's, uh, it's, it's a big question mark. It's not only sanctioning Eritrea, but sanctioning all those who uphold their independence and sovereignty. If they don't like you, they will impose sanctions. They will try to cripple your economies. They will try to incite conflict. They will try to destabilize and interfere. And they have no moral or legal high ground to come and intervene or even impose sanctions on any nation. We're fed up of this stupid idea of imposing your will on others, sovereign and independent choice, and trying to keep their economies and try to create disrupt and the, the, the disruptions here and there. One of the reasons for trying to create a rift between China and Africa is to promote their own agenda of dominance. Mm -hmm. And anyone who disagrees with them will have to be punished. For us, it's been a long experience, we've been able to face this challenge and in solidarity with our partners in Africa, with China, Asia, Europe, Americas, definitely.
And a quick update on the crisis in Sudan. The country is waking up to the last day of a fragile week-long ceasefire that's seen frequent violations. The truce is due to end midnight local time, though the warring factions, the army and the paramilitary rapid support forces have been have both expressed the possibility of an extension. The RSF said that uh, that would depend on the army's sincerity and commitment. Saudi Arabia and the United States have urged a continuation so that urgently needed humanitarian aid can be delivered to millions of people. Meanwhile, the Sudanese armed forces issued a statement expressing its willingness to negotiate with the paramilitary rapid support forces to extend the temporary ceasefire agreement. Representatives of the SAR and the paramilitary RSF signed the agreement on a seven-day ceasefire for humanitarian purpose in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia. On May the 20th, the agreement entered into force at uh, 9.45 cartoon time on May 22nd, 48 hours after the sign-in, and will expire 9.45 cartoon time on May the 29th. The RSF said it was ready to discuss renewing the ceasefire agreement. That's the program today. Thank you for watching. I'm Jokia Rogers. Bye for now.